Hello and welcome back to Vox Terra. You know, today I'm going to cite you from my notes. I believe it was the it was a February 28th of, of 2023 National Public Radio, maybe morning edition I was listening to, and they were talking about these food shortages in England, you know, specifically tomatoes and some of the vegetables. And every time I've heard this coverage, they've always said weird weather due to the weird weather, some like crop failures. The United Kingdom is light on tomatoes, cucumbers, bell peppers, broccoli, and other popular produce items are also in short supply. So why are the shelves so empty? As NPR's Stacey Vanek Smith reports, it's a combination of weird weather, energy prices, and also a little dash of trade politics. And there's something even I found even more insidious about it. Now, now, first of all, I just want to say, you know, I'm, I'm focusing on public radio because I tend to have them on a lot in the background. And I'm not saying like Fox or these so-called conservative outlets are better. I've shown you that Fox, that, you know, Rupert Murdoch has ties directly to the oil and gas industry through one of his investments. And also cited to Public Citizen showing you how Fox has been known notorious for hosting what are called climate change deniers. But what I am saying is that outlets like National Public Radio deprioritize climate change. They leave it out of the narrative, except as maybe a special story. It's not part of the regular story. And you want to always think, you know, whether intentional or unintentional, what arguments or what industries, what economic interests are being served by how the media covers what it covers and what it prioritizes. But worse yet, I found even more troubling, was that that same segment then also had some British comedians making fun of what someone was putting out as a solution, which is, hey, let's return to some of those crops that are more indigenous or grow in Britain's climate more easily, like turnips. One UK minister suggested Brits take a page from the past and eat turnips instead. They grow more easily in the clammy British climate. This suggestion sparked a raft of parodies on social media. Hi, can I get a large cheese and turnip pizza, please? No problem at all, mate. That's one Brexit margarita coming right up. I've had this freshly made. It's a BLT, bacon, lettuce and turnip. And I'm hoping that someone will at least give it a try. You're not going to try it. I don't like turnips. Okay. I'll combine it. And what it's defending is really business as usual in that you're deprioritizing climate change as your political agenda by just almost never mentioning it. And that serves to protect the fossil fuel petrochemical industry, leaving kind of confusion that our planet really is heating up. In fact, just let me back up here for a second. Britain, you know, they were having wildfires this past summer. That's a fairly unprecedented thing. Wildfires in London, major heat waves throughout Europe. And I've shown you, and in China and in the US, and I've shown you that heat waves are on the rise as our planet is heating and that that is set in motion by the excessive burning of fossil fuels. I've studied that right to NASA and right to the EPA. It's just that most media outlets are ignoring the simple right under your nose facts. Why? It serves to benefit and protect and prolong the reign of fossil fuel petrochemicals in our society. Then mocking what is a climate solution also serves that as well because local sustainable produced agricultural goods of any sort have been on the radar or part of the environmental movement's North Star, that whole buy local. So if you are a national public radio listener, think about what is emphasized, what narratives are left out. Every day I hear something about bad China, bad regime, whoever the official enemy is, the same as you would hear on, on Fox or anywhere else. And then what is be different from NPR to Fox is maybe, you know, how they're going to present certain cultural uh, uh, what we call clashes. So anyway, that's just a, a quick thought, you know, on how, how our media is downplaying climate change, mocking solutions, and how that serves to protect established industries, and then getting people to focus on outnumbered groups of people, foreign adversaries, or just really present one-sided narratives on some cultural issues that people have some disagreements about. Well, hey, I hope you found this helpful, interesting, muy interesante. If you did, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel. You click that notification bell. You're liking, you're commenting. Thank you to my two patrons at Patreon, Bell Legrussi and Environmental Coffeehouse. And as always, until next time, peace be with you.